We're just about ready to start this final, semi-final in fact, for the Business Marathon Mobility. I will give the m judges a microphone of their own for the moment. We may need to borrow that back in case we have multiple presenters on stage, but we'll, uh, we'll go with that for now. It should be on. Do you want to test it there for us, Roger? Yes, test, one, two, three. It's on, fabulous. Okay, so for the rest of the arena, final call, and we'll begin the semifinals for the Business Marathon Mobility in one minute. We got one more team. Here it is. I knew that they would come when I called for them. Okay, let's do this. Everybody, welcome to the semifinals and presentations for the Business Marathon Mobility. My name is Dwight. I want to welcome you all. Give yourselves a round of applause because you've made it. Bigger than our next stage over here. Let's make it happen. You've made it to the final day of the campus party. And that means it's time to see the final presentations. Oh, that's a bit of a, a cheer off. <laughs> All righty, folks. So as I said, my name's Dwight. I'm the facilitator. Uh, for the folks who know me and have worked with me over the last day or so, uh, you're probably looking forward to seeing the back of me at the end of the, the, end of the day today. I've pushed you pretty hard through the last, uh, the last 48 hours. To be creative, uh, to use your inspiration for, for positive change, uh, and we'll see a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, we'll get through this today so that we can move on to the final presentations tonight as well. I'd like to, to mention and recognise the fantastic sponsors that we've had for this event. Without these, the support of these great companies and organisations, it's just not possible to run an event like this today. So we have to pay tribute to our sponsors, and I think you can all agree this has been a fantastic campus party. It's been a fantastic business marathon. So another round of applause, please, for our sponsors. There are a few of them in the, in the room as well right now, uh, and there are a bunch around the, uh, the arena for the rest of the day, the day. So if you see them, take the chance to have a chat, uh, say thank you, and, uh, and, and look out for them uh, as you move forward through your careers and, and doing things here in the, visiting the Netherlands as well. Okay, so the business marathon mobility, what was it all about when we got started and where are we at right now? So the business marathon is a concept, a little bit like a hackathon, a little bit like a, a startup event, business modeling and, uh, and startup pitching. We've combined all of those elements together to focus on a really important challenge that is mobility, how the world's mobility needs are changing uh, and what solutions we need to, to overcome some of these problems of traffic jams, uh, of, of the social opportunity for allowing people to move efficiently from A to B around their cities and around their, their regions. We had a great example case of the Utrecht Science Park, which we talked about through uh, the beginning of the event from Wednesday night through Thursday. We had some great uh, speakers come in, talk to you more about that case. Did everybody learn a few things about the Utrecht Science Park and sort of what a wonderful facility it is, but also some of the challenges that they have? So we've worked on that idea and that context, that context of a challenge for helping people get to and from the Utrecht Science Park with the bigger vision that these sorts of solutions can be applied elsewhere as well. So it's been awesome to have those speakers. We've had amazing experts and coaches. I think you all agree that some of the coaches that came in, all of the coaches in fact were helpful. They gave up their time, sometimes at odd hours of the morning and the evening to be with you. So can I get a round of applause please for the experts who came along to give you a hand. And I want to give you guys a chance to recognize yourself for all the hard work and the hustle that you've put in over the last couple of days. So give yourselves a round of applause for just getting through this and for being here today. Well done. You guys have been fantastic. 
And it is a lot about you guys. I asked you on Wednesday, uh, on Thursday morning, I should say, why are you here? And I posed the question, what do you want to get out of this event? Did you guys experience a few of these things? Have you met some great people, some new friends? Have you learned a few things along the way? I'm getting a lot of nods. So that's a good thing, right? That's what these types of events are all about, bringing people together, putting smart people in the room together, intelligent people and motivated people together in a room and then letting the good stuff happen. And that's why I get involved in these sorts of things. So thank you uh, from my side for another fantastic uh, event and a great chance to spend good time with good people. Okay, speaking of time, it, it is now pretty much time to get these presentations going. We've got four fantastic teams. I know you're all out there excited, anxious to get on stage and, and share what you've been working on for our judges. Here's how we present real quick, and then I'm going to introduce those judges to you. So we have three minute presentations this morning, as you all know, I hope you all know, I've been talking about it now for, for a day or so. We have two minutes for questions and answers and also some feedback from the judges at the front. Uh, and then we're gonna make sure that you have fun. So we're all gonna be very supportive. There's gonna be loud cheering. Uh, we're gonna recognize each other for the hard work that we've put in. Okay, to the judges, we can't have this competition without some judging. We have three fantastic judges representing the Science Park, Mobility Monday, and also the province. So I'd like to ask the judges just to uh, welcome you or, and introduce themselves very briefly. Do you want to stand up quickly, Nicolene, and, yeah. and just uh, share who you are? Okay, hi everybody. Uh, very nice meeting you. Uh, I think some of you already met uh, on, on Thursday. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to your results. I'm very curious. and. And um, I hope you had a fantastic time. And uh, well, I wish you all luck with the presentations. And uh, hopefully, uh, maybe we can work together in the future. So uh, good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Roger Terheide. I've also met some of you in the coaching. I'm project leader of Mobility Monday. That's also addressing these problems in the larger region of Utrecht. And I'm very interested to hear your solutions. Thank you. Hi, I'm Derek. I spoke to most of you uh, these past few days, and I hope you've solved my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Yes, that is true that all of the, f the judges have spent a little bit of time with s some, if not all, of the teams over the last day or so. So that's good. Hopefully that, is, uh, s that will stand you in good stead for what's about to happen with the judging criteria. They understand what you've been doing, and you understand the judging criteria that you've been working towards. So when we put this hack hackathon with this business marathon together, we looked at broadly what were the aims for the challenge and what's possible to do in a short space of time. These are pretty ambitious goals, but we like to stretch you. So we're looking for the potential and the impact, the value for society and what you've been working on, the viability of the business model. So how does it come together? Can it be self-sustaining? Can it be profit generating? Uh, or is it a social, uh, a social initiative that's going to uh, just provide value really for, for the society uh, and the community around us that, that can be funded through, through government perhaps funding? Is it original? Has it been done before? What sort of user experience and design are we expecting? So typically all the things that we are, are, are working on these days, all the things that will have an impact on mobility, there needs to be some user experience. There, is, there needs to be some sort of design elements to it to do it to do with it, and uh, those are all very important things. We wanted to understand that you've made progress, that you've learned things along the way, and that you've spoken to the experts, you've spoken to the people who are experiencing these problems so that you can really get a tacit understanding and feel for the problem that you're trying to solve, because that's super important in any, of the, any project like, uh, like the ones that you've been working on, not only for this business marathon challenge, but also in future as you go on to other other, other projects through uh, your careers in life. The execution and how much progress have you, have you made as well. So the judges are all briefed on these uh, criteria. I think we all understand what we're, what we're looking to do. And what are we judging for? Well, there is a great prize at the end of this event. It is a 2,500 euro prize for the winning team. And the way that we get there is by having these presentations this morning and selecting some teams to go ahead into the grand final presentations this evening. So right after these presentations take place, the judges will deliberate. We'll take about 10 minutes where I'll ask you to stay together here in the, uh, in the area 
and then we'll announce the teams that will present tonight at the grand finale. So are we all ready to go? Are we all set? All right, so let's present. First up, and I, this is the great part about my job, is that I get to uh, decide what order the pitches and the presentations will go in on a, on a final day like today. So we have four teams. I'm going to ask the team of Takers Places to come to the stage, please, and set up your laptop. You will be the first team to present. Little round of applause now. They haven't done it exactly as Nick says. They haven't done anything yet, but they are coming up, and that's a good thing. We'll give them a huge round of applause in just a moment. That's cool. Take us places. I'll let you pop your laptop there, sir. Oops. So you need that and, and this thing that just fell on the floor. Hello, hello. So that I can give a proper introduction to Ram and the team of Takers Places. Folks, huge round of applause for our first presentation at the Mobility Challenge. Hey guys, so today I bring to you Take Us Places, an intelligent car sharing app. So the problem we were inspired by was excessive car traffic during the rush hours. Here are some figures regarding the exact number of cars who come in and out of Utrecht Science Park every day at the following hours. Now, our solution and the goal is to reduce the number of cars who drive during the rush hours by at least 10%, as according to De Vrij University, this is the amount we need to reduce to almost completely solve the problem of traffic. Our solution solves this problem in two methods. One is to reduce the number of cars on the road during peak hours by helping students and professionals in USP find similar commuters in the area with similar journeys to them based on their addresses and personal timetables and partner them accordingly. Furthermore, we will be suggesting and incentivizing these users to participate in local activities in the area and as a result, travel outside of the um, rush hour periods. Um, the database will be updated in real time and will include information regarding the schedules and addresses of each user. And in case any user needs to add or edit their schedule during the day, our algorithm will recalculate the most efficient route, departure time, and partner to travel with. So here is going to be a quick run through of how our wireframes actually work, which Peter will bring to you. Hey guys. So when you first start off the app, you can log in with your professional or personal Facebook and LinkedIn profiles, and the app will prompt you to sync in your personal and professional timetables. Afterwards, you can uh, have various options, one of which will be to skip the rush hour and reduce the traffic, which will be offered various activities that you can do, such as going to the local sports center Olympus, taking uh, art classes in the, in the art and music, and also um, going to events run by the USP Foundation and local cafes. You can also just choose to go home now, in which case it will show you all the planned partners that you've already had, or uh, you can change your journey times and uh, different departure and, and location. And you can also edit your schedule and calendar in our, s in our app to put different journeys that you'll take in the future. Now, the first customers that we will have are the, and the most general, are the students and professionals within the USP, which we're gonna split into drivers and riders. Then you will also have the partners, which are the USP itself, local companies and, and the university within the USP, as well as uh, local businesses and uh, event coordinators within the USP. 
The value propositions for customers is offering uh, lower costs on traveling and shared expenses, as well as offering them a chance to network and meet new people, and also plan their journey times ahead of time. And the value proposition for the USP is that you will have, um, uh, that we will expand their customer base, provide them marketing opportunities, and also lower the, the, the journey times. And yeah. Okay. I am harsh. I cut it off right on time. You know that. The audience knows this. All right, so fantastic presentation first off. Where's the rest of the team from Take Us Places? Bring them up. We'll now take a couple of minutes for questions and feedback from the judges. So I'll hand the microphone over. You've got one with you. <laughs> first question. Uh, I saw it on the last slide, I think. Um, monetization yeah what's in it for the users and what's in it for the companies so for the users for the driver side the rider side would essentially be paying for the for the ride like they would in any case if they don't own the vehicle the driver would be getting uh, most of the most of the fare that the rider has paid will be taking a short commission which is lower than the current leaders in the sharing in the sharing car economy um, and for the riders um, well, generally, that would be the whole market that we're, that we're affecting. So we would not only be uh, offering, uh, we would be offering discounts in, in the local businesses and local activities that they would be able to make use of during the specific times during rush hour, which will help the cause and just reduce the general stress around as well. Yeah. Let's get some more questions in. Um, are they, do they have to put in their schedule in the app or can they connect it to the schedule they have on their smartphone? So we're planning to have them synchronize their work or university accounts to the database. And any changes they make, or Google accounts, and any changes they make to that email will automatically be updated in our database. And that's how we have the um, USP lo account login. And yeah, and that's also why we chose to partner with the universities to get this information from them directly. Sounds clear. Any other questions or feedback? One other question, then good uh, pitch, thank you. Um, can also visitors from outside the park use the, the app? Um, we have we didn't include that in the original plan because from the data we like the data we acquired, there are around seventy two thousand commuters to the park every day, and only around one percent of these are visitors. But that could be a future improvement. Um, maybe, maybe something to think about. Right. Could, uh, if the sign up for a service Grab the mic. Service from the sorry, they would be able to benefit from the local discounts, okay. um, given the, which which we'll explore in the future. Sounds like yeah. a good thing to Thank carry you. on with. Yeah. Thank you very much. So that's the time for questions. That was two minutes on the nose. Well done. Another big round of applause for Take Us Places. Well done. Thank you. All right. The next team to bring up. Where's my little sheet of paper that has all of the important information on it? Did you guys enjoy that first presentation? Not bad, huh? Set the bar, Set the bar right where it needs to be, I think. So now I'd like RP Jam to come up, please, and prepare. <laughs> While they're setting up, and I'll give them, a, give them a little hand here, I want to remind you all that after these semi-final presentations today. The teams that will be moving forward to the finals this evening will get some more support and more coaching on their presentation. So we can continue to practice and improve. Does that sound like a good idea to you? Yeah. Or are you gonna just ace this presentation right now? No further improvement possible and no pressure being set by your trusty facilitator. No, this is gonna be a lot of fun. We're having fun, aren't we, folks? That's good. Yes, you're learning. Just clap all the time. Make it fun. No, we're having a good time. I certainly am. It sure is. You want to bring that one across to the other screen. Yeah, I think that's the right direction. Keep going. Other way. There it comes. It's arrived. 
So I have a one microphone in my hand. How many microphones did your team need again for this presentation? Was it two? Where does the other microphone need to go to? It'll it'll turn on in just a moment. Okay, guys, let's keep the keep the flow, keep things rolling. Are you all set? It's up at that top left hand there, or right hand, I should say. Hey. Yeah. Hey, one thing, okay, just a second. I don't know about your sound. I don't know about your sound. Okay. Okay, my sound is fine. You see the light. Okay. So, guys. Just setting up the website, are you? Yeah, just um, sure. Yeah, you'll need to get the internet connection for that. We can do this. Okay. We have a few moments. The crowd is waiting patiently. Thank you very much for that. So that's plugged in. Okay, maybe something to show during the question time, perhaps. Yeah. So, I need to step off the stage now. You're just about ready to go. I will reset the timer. And when you guys and girls kick off, and once we've had an awesome round of applause, we'll get this started and I'll start the timer, okay? So folks, round of applause for RP Jam. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, I got stuck in the traffic and uh, I even took the bike and I even got stuck. I mean, y you know guys what it feels like to be stuck in the traffic here in Utrecht, right? I'm sorry, Jesse, here. I'm sorry, but you are fired. No, 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 seriously. I'm just kidding. But really, you should use App Jam. Okay. Uh, but what's, wha what's App Jam? Look, every day thousands of people are commuting to this area to work, to study. And by using App Jam, okay. it actually helps you to organize yourself. It helps you, prevents you from stress, and helps our company yeah, to lose yeah. money, and also environmentally friendly. Okay, all right, but then wha what does it do concretely? So App Jam brings together the Google Maps, it's not sorry, uh, yeah. weather forecast, the agenda, and the smart intelligence. Okay, all right. So, but Google Maps already does my, agen my agenda. So, what does EpiGem do that Google Maps doesn't do? Well, the difference is this EpiGem predicts for you in advance if it's going to be traffic jam on the route or if it, the weather is not going to be nice. But it, 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 it does it for us, not the night before, but for the next week, taking into consideration your agenda, your appointments, everything in one single app. And besides that, when you get to work, it, always, uh, it can also help you to look if there is enough park plots in the parking lot. And besides that, Google Maps would normally point, give a point into our building, but actually my office is not so easy to find, and it would also uh, recalculate for you the okay, time. Okay, let me, let me summarize up quickly. Okay, so Google Maps provide the, the, the map, but Happy Jam can also provide the weather, provides also the prediction on when I should be leaving home that Google doesn't do, and also I will get at work without being wet. That's what you're saying to me? Yes, exactly. Okay, but then in that case, where can I find it? Well, we have the customer's check, we have the model check, we have the prototype check, but it's not yet available. Okay, and what do we, we need then? We are still working it, and uh, we need supporters for making our okay. app to be all available. Right. Android and App Store. Thank you yes. very much then. You're welcome. Hey, all right. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened, but during our presentation, we were seeing the slides, but you weren't. Oh, that's okay. I think we got the message, right? We kept on going, very well done. Big round of applause. Where's the rest of the team from RP Jam? Right. Come on up, the rest of the, let's get the rest of the team up. Bring them up. You had a w you had a version of the website to show as well, right? Yes, exactly. Let's try and get that up Where here, maybe. Yeah, I just didn't. That's not the problem. I was we were talking. Yeah, 
Okay, the judges, I might just borrow your microphone. Desiree's still got a microphone right here. I'll hand the, the mic over. We'll get ready for some questions in just a moment. Did you want to bring up that yeah, website yeah. so we can see it? No. Because you're just in full screen mode again? Yeah. So Nick is running the main stage tonight, and he, he may have different ideas on how to do the timing. But for now, we have a little bit of time up our sleeves, so I'm happy to let you show off the fine website that you have been yeah. working on. Mm -hmm. And then how do we uh, search it? Synchronize it with the, the scanner. Huh? It's extended across to the different desktop, so you just need to... No, we're not mirroring. Do you want me to drag this across? Here it comes. All right. The demo, the website. Okay, so that's there. Now, I'd love to hear some questions and some feedback from the judges and maybe a chance to, to show what you've built as well. Great presentation. Um, but a bit of the same question uh, I asked last time, who's paying for this? Who's paying for this? Well, actually, in our business model canvas, we consider that we will need the support of the organization and businesses, ideally from the Utrecht region, but the project could be scalable because this is a societal and um, business-friendly ideas in order to reduce all uh, the, of course, pollution, CO2 footprint, and make us also healthier by doing more um, physical activity. So you expect companies to pay this? We actually expect to find partners to support the development of the product and then to do everything from the marketing to the, um, um, uh, like say, a communication of the product. What is the main incentive for users to use your app and not choose one of the other thousand apps that help you with traveling? Because we actually aggregate multiple data from multiple application on one application and Mo our model is actually based on real-time data. I mean, real-time data plus historical data. They will make that we could actually be even more accurate than the existing ones. If we can prove our customers that our product work, they will just come with us. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can you apply it to the different uh, modes of transport, like bikes and cars and everything? Yes, uh, because Google uh, already does it for us. So since Epigem is bring everything together in one single app, it also use the bike, cars, and also the public transportation. So uh, when you have an appointment next week or tomorrow, for example, um, it would uh, suggest that you should leave home at a specific time, buy a car or buy a bike, and take into consideration the weather forecast and so. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Any uh, feedback or advice for this team? Some feedback. I just go along feedback. with, uh, I don't know his name, but you did pr very professional. Just go on. And I like very much your uh, presentation. I like uh, this kind of uh, theater piece. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for the feedback. All right, folks. So I'll ask Arpy Jam to step off the stage. I get to carry a million things at once, which is always fun. Now I need integrated mobility solutions which I think is the name of the next team. They've been uh, a little bit elusive this morning, but they're here now, so we're ready to hear their presentation. Travel Assist is their name. Excellent. I have a microphone for you. Shazib. So this is Shazib. Shazib, you want to plug that in? So how are you going to do this tonight, Nick? Tell me, what's happening in between the presentations? No idea yet. We don't know yet. Yeah. We're going to work together, like these teams have been working together all event. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's going to be great tonight. I'm looking forward to it. I think we have essentially the entire campus party coming to watch. Teams from the Mobility Challenge, teams from the Energy Challenge, facing off well not facing off because there is a winning prize for mobility and there is a winning prize for energy as you know Shazib looks like you're all set here yeah all ready to go yeah 
You got that microphone up nice and close to the mouth? Yeah. So you're going <laughs> to scream down that microphone? Yeah. You got it, all right? Okay. Stay focused. Is everybody ready to hear from Shazib? All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before, my, uh, before I start my presentation, I would like to uh, introduce my uh, teammates, Heng and Steven. Okay. The, the main problem what we are solving is to uh, reduce the traffic uh, uh, in the Utrecht, Utrecht uh, region uh, during the peak hours. Okay. Um, the, the basic challenge is to change the mobility of the uh, user um, I mean, the basic idea is to change the mobility of the car user um, by, uh, by making hi him uh, use either uh, public transport or, the, or to travel at a different instant of time, not at the peak hours. Okay? Uh, by speaking to uh, experts, we found out that just by, uh, uh, by making 10% of car users not travel during the traffic hours, we can avoid traffic jams. So our uh, idea is to focus mainly on uh, how can we make this 10% not to travel during the peak hours. Um, OK. So um, th these are the existing approaches already there. There are already the apps available that predicts the current traffic and the future traffic, such as Google, uh, GoAbout, and ANW, et cetera. So what we suggest is not to build an app, but how can we make people make use of this app? Okay. So what we suggest is like there is already an app. Build a widget out of this app. So um, what we thought was let us partner with the companies, and this uh, widget will be installed on the on the on the system of the company, uh, which, which, which is personalized as per the employees. Uh, say, for example, uh, if an employee leaves at 4 o'clock, this app will pop up automatically, showing different uh, modes of transport available. And uh, if, if you were to travel at, say, for example, 16, uh, and if you were to travel at uh, 17, uh, you would save 10 minutes time by car. Okay, Basically telling. Uh, uh, basically showing best possible options for different instances of time. Uh, uh, this is how it's going to look like. Basically, uh, if a user is uh, using, uh, the, the widget will automatically pop up, Okay, showing the specification. The main benefits for the employee is that uh, the, as uh, the employees are more, uh, have more free time, they are more productive, uh, less fuel consumption, and uh, the companies are doing more towards uh, uh, building an environment, a friendly environment. OK, uh, what we need is the, OK, uh, what we, we already have the ingredients available. We just have to build a widget out of it. All right, and that'll do it. Three minutes is up. Well done, Shazib. Where's the rest of the team? Questions? Where's the rest of the team? Let's bring them all up here. Ah, thank you, Roger. You probably don't need that. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Shazib. Thank you to the rest of the team for joining us on stage. I get the microphone ready now. How are the judges feeling? Some feedback, some questions? Dirk, do you have a question? Perhaps the same question again? Perhaps the same question I again. I felt Indeed. like that might happen. Yes, who's paying for this? <laughs> who's paying, guys? Um, Show me the money. Uh, uh, this is more of a uh, uh, social... Um, um, You can pass the microphone around, yeah, by all means. So the idea is that the employer will be um, interested in this for making it um, better for uh, the economy, um, but it's still a matter of how much would they benefit from it, and if they don't benefit enough from it, or uh, it might also be from government subsidies, because um, the main goal is still to reduce traffic during peak hours. It's more economy, um, environmentally friendly. So from a government perspective, there's still much to gain. And so... To get it as much um, interesting as possible for the employers. Okay, yeah. I think we got it. Yeah, Nicholas elbowing the elbowing the other judges out of the way. 
thank you very much. Uh, I have a question. If I'm a car driver and I just want to go leave work and I get this uh, information, uh, why should I uh, just listen to it? What is my incentive to do it? Because I probably won't take a bike. Yeah. It's to give you an informed decision um, because you see this pop up like an hour before you, you give your time, I want to leave at this time, and then um, this pops up and it shows you, because you probably already arrived with the car, so for that day, it might only give you information about, hey, you could take another time. But even then, you have certain hours a day, so maybe not, it's not directly relevant. But it gives you an informed decision for the future. Like, hey, public transport, a bike, it would take me this long. Maybe now, if I want to take my normal time, I would be half an hour in traffic. You said that social drive, socially uh, aspect was important. What are the social drivers here? How would you, how could this go viral, or how, why would people share this? No, no. Yeah. The thing is, uh, we are already building on. Uh, we are building this thing on the the already available app. Okay, so the. Uh, um, Just to say, I think it's a good idea because Google isn't social. So, this is uh, an important aspect of your uh, pitch. Okay, okay. some feedback there on the end. A little, a little bit of a tip, perhaps. It's it what sounds like uh, Roger thinks there is an opportunity here if you can make this a little bit more viral, a little bit more social. Is that the idea, Roger? Yeah, yeah. yeah? I think so it's an interesting some, aspect. That's some good feedback there to wrap up the question time for, for you guys. I'll snatch this microphone back from you. I'd love to have... No, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a thank... I'll pass, that, I'll pass that thank you on from the, uh, from the team. Thank you very much, folks. Nice to see the crowd getting involved on cue with a round of applause. So that means we have one last team. It's U-Turn. U-Turn's going to come up. They'll set up their presentation. Oh, you do need that. This is one of the very few non-Mac laptops that I've seen that uses the mini display port. Watch it. Watch it live. It's a Dell. Is Dell a sponsor? Should we be mentioning Dell on stage? I don't know. We don't worry about it. I own the stage right now, and I'm happy to share it with this fabulous duo here from U-Turn, who are set up now. It looks like it. <laughs> so, I give you a microphone, Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final presentation, so let's make it double loud. <laughs> and let's hear it for you, turn. So, the question is, can we relieve the, the traffic problem in Utrecht, not by building extra lanes on the highway, not by adding extra buses, or not by... Uh, e extra tram lines, uh, but based on a smart 21st century solution. So we are two 21st century guys, and uh, we came up with a 21st century solution. <laughs> it's the 200 year old uh, bicycle. Uh, we want to have more bicycles in the city um, for uh, people commuting from outside, uh, from uh, uh, other cities coming to Utrecht. We think the, um, so they use the, this bicycle, this beautiful o OV uh, transport bike. They can get it at the station. Um, why are, isn't everyone using this bike? And we think the most uh, uh, important reason is convenience um, compared to the car and the, the bus is that you need to find your own way. And uh, the, the bike doesn't have, have a tom-tom yet. So we use uh, in our design the ASAP principle. Everyone probably knows what where ASAP stands for. It's as simple as possible. <laughs> so um, we want, uh, we're creating a design um, with this circle-like pointer. Um, um, when you um, come close to a crossroads, it alerts um, and it points in a direction where you need to go, uh, basically. Um, so we have uh, different designs and uh, it's based on smart data, so um, if some streets uh, people are driving slower, then the system learns that uh, it may uh, reroute. Um, it should be 
as easy as possible. So you have this 9292 uh, app, which is everyone already using. We want to create software which can be implemented in current apps, like 9292 in the Netherlands. Um, so you just step on the bike um, with Bluetooth, it connects to the device, you, you switch on the device, and you can just go and it, it s tells you where to go. Um, so uh, we, it can be used on uh, different applications, like I said. So what's our revenue model? Um, we like to uh, start up, for example, as a joint venture with the NS, um, and they uh, fund the project, they, uh, they become shareholder. Um, but uh, we have this uh, technology, so we uh, can expand it on other fields too. So for example, private uh, um, uh, rental companies, um, and also maybe just on the shelf for private users. Um, so uh, what is in the future? Well, we have this created this, uh, this idea, and we think we maybe even expand it. Um, we think, uh, for example, for tourist purposes, it can also point you to touristic places very easily. So we think there's a bright future uh, for this idea, and it's, we think, really feasible also. And that's it. The time is up. Nice round of applause. The other half of the duo, Alex. Alex. Alex is up. So you may recognize this guy from the picture earlier on in the presentation. <laughs> Great. My timer is buzzing, that's okay. We're ready for some questions and some feedback. Well, thank you very much for the beautiful presentation. It worked very well, it's a very nice uh, uh, done. Very, thank you very much, very, uh, <laughs> well, very humoristic as well. Um, and um, as, as, as you have this Tom Tom on your bike, which I think it's an original idea, um, and it also points you out where to go, like if I have to, go, uh, in my, if I'm going from Amsterdam to Utrecht, uh, then I take this, I go by train and I, I take this bike and it will show me all the, sh well, it, it, it also will um, uh, show me where the traffic jams are and which shorter routes I can take. So the, the device on the bike only actually shows you where to go, okay. but you can still use the 9292 or, uh, or other app right. to, to see the map. Okay, but it can like. also, if I want to have a touristic road, uh, you, it can also show me that. Yeah, so in the future we can uh, maybe add the, the functionality, for example, that you point, uh, I want to uh, go to this landmark, and mm -hmm. it shows you where to go. Okay, Okay. let's grab some more questions. Yeah, great simple ID, and great to see something physical instead of an just an app or something. Um, and there's a, from a mobility perspective, this has a huge poten potential, because bike and train is almost always the fastest combination in the Netherlands, and highly underused, so this is really a uh, golden opportunity, um, but uh, how are you going to make it? Um, maybe you want to talk? Okay. Uh, so as you might have seen probably earlier, uh, we had, so this is like the kind of device, we don't know what it will look like yet, but I mean that's the main part. Uh, it, it will of course need an app, so uh, we will be building an app to make this work like it, it won't take long because it's like a very simple app only for the um, proof of concept and then at that point the API will be available user will start using it and the, the data will keep coming and like get aggregated to the um, CD open data which already exists so at that point it will be very easy for uh, other companies to integrate it uh, okay. like 9292 sounds good just to add to Derek Go find those hackers here with IoT, uh, Internet of Things, uh, mind of stuff, they'll build it for you. Yeah. So outsource things you don't do yourself. There is one question though, you were talking about the 9292 9 app and uh, adding bicycle uh, traveling data. Are you going to add that service yourself? Are you going to build that or are you going to expect other people to build that? So are you going to be dependent or are you going to be independent on bicycle traveling time? So that, that was the main point of the solution. So uh, we uh, we start being independent, so we don't have to rely on them. There will be them then later uh, asking like to, uh, or willing probably, uh, to uh, add our service because it's going to be like a service being used. So it, it will be uh, beneficial for them like to add them other service to the app. Are you gonna oh, provide them in the know I might okay. stop you there, Roger. We're just All out right. of time, but I think there's a great chance for maybe you to get some more feedback. 
Pat and answer that question in more detail okay. just after we finish up. But we're on a little tight schedule here. We need to get the judges together. We need to deliberate for the next couple of minutes. Uh, we're going to be very, very quick. So for everybody in the audience here, I think Nick, who is an absolute all-star at watching presentations, he has some feedback for you. I'll give him the microphone so he can look after you while I step aside with the judges. Yeah. You guys These gentlemen can take a seat. And another big round of yes. applause, guys, for everyone. Okay. So you guys didn't realize you saw me sitting down here at the front, maybe taking some notes and looking like I was playing on my phone. Actually, what I was doing was taking some notes. Uh, I've seen about 5,000 startup presentations in the last four years. So I thought what the best thing I could do right now is just take a couple of notes and give you two or three pointers each team, really specific, so that if you go through or maybe uh, if you've got to have a conversation with somebody later on this afternoon or maybe one of these judges, you could just sharpen up a little bit. I don't want to overwhelm you. It's literally just, hey, if you tweak this and tweak that, you're going to get you know, 10 or 20% better, and that might make the difference, right? Um, so I'll just go in order of the teams. Uh, the first team up was Take Us Places. Where are you guys? All right. Um, the things I wrote down was, one, get used to using a microphone. Uh, you were the guy pitching, right? And every now and again, your microphone would drop like this. And then all of a sudden, you completely lost the judges. Just put it on your chin like that. Just jam it on there and stick it on there. And you can all do this. And it doesn't matter whether you look up or look down and whether you wave your arms around, you'll never lose the microphone, OK? Uh, <clears throat> I think it was your second slide. You showed a slide that had lots of data over how bad the traffic is. And I was just sort of halfway through reading it. And you clicked onto the next slide. So I didn't really understand how bad the problem was. But then when you were talking to the judges at the end, you said something like, I didn't get it quite, but there are 72,000 people traveling through the science park every day, week, something like that. If you'd have said that at the beginning, I would have woken up. So when you're showing that slide with all that, you know, like 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, don't, don't make me read it. Just tell me there's 72,000 people a day, right? And put some emphasis on it. This is the evil villain. This is the Darth Vader in your story, right? And every good story has a villain, right? Where would Star Wars be without Darth Vader? Where would Superman be without Lex Luthor, right? So that's your villain. We're going to beat this traffic. Um, and you did a lot of kind of turning around to look at the screen. But you and I both know it was right here in front of you, right? You don't need to look up there. If it's here, it's there. You can all remember that, right? Think about the end of the movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger's walking towards you. And there's a huge explosion in the background. And what makes him badass? He doesn't care. He just keeps walking. I don't care what's behind me. Because I'm having a conversation with you guys, OK? So I think that, for me, was the biggest tip for you guys. Hope you find that helpful. Oh, and one of the questions you're going to get from the judges, if you're paying these people to do ride sharing, you know, the people with a car, how are you going to deal with the taxes? I guarantee you I've seen that pitched before, and the judges will ask that question. And if the answer is, we don't know, just say, guys, it's been a weekend. We haven't got that far. We're going to figure it out tomorrow. All right, next up, travel assist. Where are you guys? Travel assist? Yep. You don't even know your own team name. Awesome. Um, there's one word that you need to remove from your dictionary for the rest of your life. Do you know what it is? Um. Because uh, it was about every fifth word that you said. And I know why. You're a little bit nervous. There's a whole stage full of people out here. You just got to remove it from your dictionary. It's OK to say something, to stop to pause, and then to keep talking. You don't need to um, uh, fill in all the mm, uh, blanks, and it's OK, just one step at a time. I think part of the reason you're nervous is that you don't have a clear storyline yet. So what I would advise you to do is just lay out your slide deck, take one post-it note for each slide, and write down the one thing that you want to communicate whilst that slide is up. Because then you will be short. Straight to the point, punchy, professional, and sound like you know what you're talking about. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, and 
when you've done that, you'll be much more confident because you'll know the story, right? One, one post in out, one slide. Uh, you also had one slide on there with all the existing options. And it was kind of like a bunch of text and a bunch of URLs. Just stick a bunch of logos on there. We all know what 9292 looks like. We all know what Google Maps looks like. We'll get it much faster, and then we can turn our attention back to listening to you. Wow, the judges are back already. Holy cow. Uh, API Jam, where are you guys? That's you. Um, I love the fact that you just kept on going. That is awesome. So whatever happens, just keep talking, because the time keeps going. Uh, I got to say, when you put two people on stage, there are 500 ways you can screw it up. So if you're going to do the two-person thing, that's cool, that's ballsy, that's, that's sassy, that's good, but you've got to practice, practice, and practice some more. I liked a bit of energy, and I realized that the, the, the slides started screwing up, and then you started panicking, but it's okay to come on stage and like, Desiree, you, you, you kind of like, you, you kind of walked in, and it's okay because you're a bit nervous because you're about to say, I'm really sorry, but you're like, I'm, I'm really sorry, but the audience couldn't kind of, it's like, boss, I'm so sorry. The, the traffic around here, it's awful. You know it, I know it, there's nothing I can do. And then I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I didn't catch your name. Ra Rachel or Raquel? We had that yesterday, right? Okay. And Raquel, you, you're like, you're fired. Right? Nobody says you're fired. They go, damn it, Desiree, that's the second time this week you are fired. And then you'll get the laughter like you are giving me right now, okay? But otherwise, I think you did a good job. Um, you said something right at the very end. I think you were talking to the judges. And you said something like, the difference between us and the other guys is API Jam combines the data from all of the other sources, and that's what makes it really unique. Something like that. I think you can make that really punchy. I think you could turn that in something like, API Jam combines data from Google, 9292, and the weather report. I don't know which data, but you do. And you know what? When you combine all that together, it's like having a little superhero in your pocket. Was that the last team, or was there one more? You turn. So I got to tell you, I don't have a lot of feedback for you, because it's pretty damn good. Just keep practicing that story. You know your slides already. I think your challenge is going to be on the questions. And I should tell you, because you guys have already made your decision, right? I can't influence you anymore. I should tell you, I'm going to connect you to a friend of mine who's actually already building the hardware for this. But he has not thought about how do you connect it to all the public transport data. He's building it for a different reason. So you guys should probably hook up and see if you could do a deal. Dwight. It's your stage. I am on mute, so you wouldn't overhear the judges deliberating. They didn't have a lot of time, but it was intense. There was a lot of uh, thoughts and feedback about the, the three, four teams, in fact, that we, that we had that pitched and presented and the three teams that we need to take forward into the final. So I'd like to do that now. I'll ask the, win the teams that we have as semi-final winners to, to come up and join me on stage. Uh, and before I do that, or actually after I do that, I'll hear from the judges with some quick feedback as well uh, to give you some, uh, some tips going forward to each of the teams. So now, without the backdrop, but with the important information, of course, the three teams that will take on to the final in no particular order, take us places, RP Jam and U Turn. The other three teams that will go forward, come on up. So you're up on stage. There's not going to be too many people left in the crowd. So I want to bring our fourth team up as well because you've worked your butts off all weekend, or all week, I should say, and uh, also put in a huge effort. You deserve the recognition too. So, guys, well done from my side. I'll ask very quickly if. They're all taking photos. See, they're all so proud of the effort that you've made and the progress that you've made. Dirk, you don't have a phone in your hand, so I'll give I'll it to you. I'll remember you anyway. Let's listen up to Dirk. Uh, He's got a few quick words of feedback for you. Just some very short pointers. Take us places. Uh, great potential, but it's very complex. So try to make it simpler and focus. You're actually having three categories, not two. You're having drivers, riders, and stayers. So uh, there's a bit of carpooling in it. There's a bit of staying in it. Both are very powerful, but make them 
uh, more clear that there are two categories. API Jam, great that you're using everybody else's data, really smart, um, so keep that. But think about the potential, who's paying, why is it interesting? It's not, I mean, I don't see an employer paying for it yet, but there's, there's potential there, or so somebody else, uh, somebody just might want to pay from themselves, you know, just think of something of a business model, so something, anything. Uh, IMS Travel Assist, uh, it's a nice gadget, but it's too much maybe a gadget. So it, it's, it's, I think it will be very difficult if you ever want to implement that. And U-turn, uh, great presentation. Um, but think about more about how you're gonna build it. If you wanna sell this, you need to, we need to know it's cheap. Because you're gonna install it on four, five, 10,000 bikes. So it needs to be cheap and it needs to be strong and it needs to be reliable. Those are really important points to think of. Okay, thank you for the feedback, Jack. Roger. Right. Uh, um, take us places, make the persona a little bit more clear. I think it's a little bit too technical and I, if you can just give one or two cases of a person who will change their behavior, it would be more clear why it would work and why it would be top of mind. Because Derek already said it's pretty complex uh, and you make it more lively. Uh, AppGem, uh, yeah, we're missing the business case and I know you have it there. So that's where I want you to support that much more. It's good to have the user stories, but without the business case, uh, everybody's thinking, wh why is this going to make a difference? And I think you have enough uh, knowledge in your team to, to know why it does. So make sure it's in your presentation uh, tonight. Um, travel Assist, the social aspect is something you guys have knocked on but can work on, and that would be make it much more interesting. So Just there's something there. Mm. Need some work. And U-turn, uh, great. but. I think that mainly the connection on how it really works between uh, public transport and bike is, is something unique that you're m you can put a little bit more effort on it. Because I don't know how to have to know about the 9292 app, but I need to know the difference where you make the difference. Not just on the bike, but just before I step onto the bike. Okay? Nick Lane? Well, most things are probably said, but also some final remarks. Uh, take us place. Uh, thank you very much. I think also the, the combination with the social uh, incentives are very, uh, very well, uh, very good. There's also some solution we're thinking of now, so how can we keep people longer at the park? Uh, so I think that's a good thing, thank you. Uh, AP Jam, I think also this integrated uh, solutions is, is very, very uh, interesting. So uh, uh, I th I'm very in favor of that and about the business models was already said before, so I won't uh, repeat that. Uh, integrated uh, solutions for the travel assist uh, was for me still too uh, too small. Um, not something I would now uh, buy or do something uh, with it, but um, I hope you will keep up the good work because uh, there are interesting thoughts in it, so thank you very much. And U-turn for me was, was a different one and I liked very much because it was more f a physical thing, well, very well done presentation and uh, and I hope you also in, uh, include some uh, other uh, roads, perhaps touristic or different kind of uh, things to do by bike, so you can also put some more uh, uh, different uh, roads in it. So thank you very much, and uh, well, good luck uh, for tonight. Thanks, guys, and well done. So we just need to wrap this up really, really quickly. I want to say one more time, congratulations, well done, you did it. So well done. And now, just to wrap up in the last 10 seconds, what happens next? So I want to leave you with four important thoughts. This is for everybody. I want to make sure that you've exchanged your contact details, that you know each other, you've become friends for a long time, you know, long time into the future. I'd highly recommend and encourage you to keep attending events like this, like the campus party, other meetups and hackathons in your home cities and here in Utrecht as well for those who are local. Make this community spirit keep going. Um, make the innovative spirit continue uh, in your home cities because you've now had that experience here at the campus party and you can take that home and, and spread that around amongst all of your friends and colleagues. Keep on hustling, keep on doing the hard work. Don't forget the awesome time you've had at the campus party. For the teams that are coming through to the finals, can we just meet over here for five minutes so I can give you some more instructions? And for everybody, enjoy the rest of the campus party experience, okay? Well done. Thank you. And thanks to the judges. Thanks to the judges. Let's get off the stage, and then and that way Nick can have it back and he'll be a happy what camper. Is it get off the stage and sit back down in the audience because our next speaker is already <laughs> here. I just need this 
guys for two minutes. Yeah, and Dwight, I'm going to need your headset if you would be so kind. Look at that, like a pro. I got it. 